welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, and thanks for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. Up uh, first here, satellite imagery showing uh, the visual starting out here, low pressure just northwest of Unalaska Island and clouds coming down around the northwest uh, perimeter there on some pretty good northerly winds blowing down across the central Aleutians. And then the uh, frontal boundary here bringing a lot of moisture up across Kodiak Island with uh, pretty good winds, low pressure down here coming northward. That's going to tighten the gradient up enough to bring storm warnings into the Barren Islands and on into Kachemak Bay. Uh, first Barren Islands tonight, Kachemak Bay on Sunday, and even looking at pretty strong winds for the uh, Southern Cook Inlet area south of the Forelands coming up to 45 knots tomorrow. So pretty good wind producer with this uh, system coming up. Otherwise, a lot of uh, pretty good clearing here over the interior, virtually cloud free from roughly about Fairbanks back to the western of the northern Cuscombe Valley, picking up the clouds here as the higher stuff comes northward and uh, some afternoon cube building over the mountains with the Copper River Basin still looking pretty good today and a partly to mostly kind of day there across the southeast coast uh, with um, some lingering showers, mostly down over the southern areas here due to this mass of moisture over in Canada and still kind of affecting the southern border areas here. Otherwise pretty dry there across this, the uh, southeast coast and some clearing off the coast. And not too bad, uh, about the same type of weather we've seen for a couple of days up along the Arctic coastal areas. Back out to the west, uh, looks like northerly flow going on out there. These last few frames all the way back out to the west, but that'll be changing as that ridge of high pressure that's farther back to the west right through here shifts eastward and that'll allow eventually another front to bring some gale force winds back into the western Aleutians uh, probably on Monday. Otherwise, uh, on today, here's that system coming toward Kodiak Island. That's going to bring the strong gusty winds, gales, and again the storms into the Barren Islands tonight and winds will be increasing later on along the North Gulf Coast with uh, rain now reaching the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula back across Kachemak Bay and uh, getting a little more showery as it crosses the Aleutian Range here into Bristol Bay. And this portion of the front, pretty weak, a lot of clouds, just some areas of uh, showers here with this portion, and then widely scattered light precipitation back down in toward the Aleutians there. Northeast winds on the increase here up over the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island to about the Bering Strait, but uh, nothing more than uh, about 15 to 30 miles an hour, a few higher gusts, but generally coming up. And again, the mostly sunny conditions here are partly to mostly sunny. Clouds here along the uh, mountainous terrain there from the Alaska Range up across uh, the White Mountains with maybe some isolated showers developing, but basically uh, pretty good here over toward the uh, border, Eagle on down to Northway into the Eastern Copper River Basin, McCarthy, uh, seeing some sun today, as well as areas on into the northern southeast coast. And then we had showers mostly down here over the southern areas, more isolated up to the north there. And the Arctic coast, uh, not too bad, very light easterly winds or breezes with uh, variable clouds and a few flurries. Again, uh, not much change what we've seen in the last few days. And then the northeast winds on the increase here, we've got that ridging out to the west, up into the Russian Far East, and then the low complex here south of the Aleutians. So there's a band of pretty good northerly winds with that coming southward, and that whole pattern is gonna be shifting eastward gradually over the next uh, couple of days. And for the forecast for tonight, uh, again, ridging light winds for the western Aleutians northward, strong northerly winds or stronger, stronger northerly winds here coming down from the Bering Strait, southward right across the uh, central Aleutians. Look for uh, some showery conditions go along with the wind and then the precipitation field here kind of backing westward. So that'll bring a chance of rain, increasing chance of rain later tonight for the Pribilof Islands. And that'll tend to uh, shift southward to the Alaska Peninsula 
otherwise uh, showers from the uh, Unalaska Dutch Harbor area over toward Nikolsky and then rain up here across the, the Alaska Peninsula periods of for Bristol Bay northward to Dillingham and cutting off uh, probably before it reached the southern Cuscombe Valley. Easterly flow here cutting the precipitation off right along the Alaska range so uh, could be possibly heavy at times here in those upslope areas as that uh, frontal system lifts northward and again uh, storm force winds in advance of that for the uh, Barren Islands here coming in this evening and then eventually into Kachemak Bay. Winds will be diminishing later tonight as that front lifts north of Kodiak Island and then the whole system here pushing gradually eastward across the Gulf of Alaska. Chance of rain on the south coast there, the Panhandle from Port Alexander on down to Dixon entrance uh, late tonight in toward morning with a gradual increase in the winds. Uh, mostly cloudy here for the remainder of the Panhandle with uh, maybe some isolated showers. Again, mostly off into Canada. The interior looking fair, Tanana Valley, Copper River Basin. Variable clouds, look for an increase in the mid and high level clouds here for the Copper River Basin as this system pulls northward. But seeing really nice here through the interior. And again, same pattern up along the Arctic coast. Light easterly breezes uh, turning northeast and then northerly here across the Chukchi Sea and picking up a little bit uh, with just uh, isolated showery conditions or uh, rain and snow showers caught up in that northerly wind, nothing significant at all. And then for tomorrow, we'll see that uh, front uh, edges northward, not really pushing northward, but definitely brings rain and gale force winds at times into the southern panhandle or into the, uh, the coastal areas of the southeast coast with, uh, of course, rain all along the frontal boundary. So it looks pretty uh, wet tomorrow for all of the panhandle. Same story for the North Gulf Coast, rain. Uh, back across Prince William Sound, the Kenai Peninsula, and again, uh, having trouble getting too far to the north. Uh, farther north you are, less of a chance you'll see much of anything. Maybe some showers developing there around Abesna. Otherwise, uh, fair. Again, partly and mostly sunny for the Tanana Valley, uh, both tomorrow and again on Monday, with uh, no change all the way up to the Arctic coast. Uh, conditions staying about the same there with uh, Areas or periods of low clouds, patchy fog, maybe some flurries, nothing significant at all in the way of any type of precipitation, just some lower flying conditions. Looking pretty good up here with the northwest with offshore flow. Uh, should keep it VFR and probably mostly sunny, partly to mostly for the Seward Peninsula on down to St. Lawrence Island. Really nice day tomorrow here from the, uh, for the uh, Koyukuk or the Yukon River Valley, but uh, the Kuskokwim Valley there increasing clouds but dry throughout the afternoon and uh, good northerly winds here gale force coming down into the central Aleutians and that edging in toward the eastern Aleutians so a much windier day coming up especially for tomorrow afternoon for the Fox Islands there's this 990 millibar low now sits uh, near or just north almost right there near or west of Nelson Lagoon higher pressure ridge here starting to move eastward uh, being nudged along by a front just coming onto the scene out there, bringing some wind and rain in toward the Commodorsky Islands. And then for uh, tomorrow night, that'll continue eastward. And by Monday, actually a new system will develop along the front and swing in, and that'll bring uh, gale force winds into the western areas there with uh, rain spreading eastward, possibly as far east as Adak uh, by late or early evening Monday. Otherwise, uh, this area high pressure here dominating the central, eastern Bering Sea, even into the interior. Thermal low developing over the, uh, looks like the Tanana Valley, eastern interior there. So uh, lots of sunshine, dry conditions, light winds, uh, really nice Monday coming up for much of interior Alaska. And then we've got uh, showers here, possible, with mostly cloudy skies, Prince William Sound, down the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island along the Alaska Peninsula. Another system farther to the south here, uh, pushing some surges of moisture up, southwesterly flow, those troughs will be rolling right into the southeast coast. So it's going to be pretty unsettled uh, rain tomorrow and then showery, uh, increasing in frequency with each passing trough there. And then looks like another one here to the southwest that will be pushing in for Monday night. And for temperatures across the Panhandle today, uh, upper 40s to upper 50s with 47 at Klawak. Same thing at Yakutat, Skag with the 57 and a 56 degree reading there at Peter, or Wrangell, no that's Petersburg, Wrangell at 50 degrees 
and 52 at Cordova. Same temperature matched at Palmer with 52, about the same in Kenai. Homer 51, lower to mid 40s there with the rain and wind for Kodiak. Kodiak Island, Kodiak State Airport, and Okiok. Same temperature pattern for Bristol Bay. Up to the north, 61 in Talkeetna this afternoon with Gull Can at 57. Lower 60s there, nice day in the Tanah Valley, both at Fairbanks and Tanana. Eagle up to 64. Fort Yukon, 61 degrees. And uh, 55 there at Bettles. And for Anatovic, 43. And it looks like 20s all along the Arctic coast. Kaktovic at 27 and a 24 degree reading here over at Cape Lisbourne. Otherwise, we're looking uh, not too bad here, uh, about 40 for Kivalina, 49 for Kotzebue, and 51 degrees for Nome. Otherwise, uh, still kind of chilly out there toward the Bering Strait and St. Lawrence Island, 30 degrees at Tin City in Wales, 30 above also at Savunga. And the uh, Cuscoom River Valley temperatures Southwest of McGrath, uh, all in the 50s, still 57 though at Bethel, and 50 degrees St. Michael with McCoriak, Nunavik Island, down to 41. Out to the west, the Pribloffs in the 40 to 45 degree range with uh, 43 at Unalaska, same thing at Atka, falling back into the upper 30s here, with that colder northerly flow coming down across the Bering with 39 at Adak and down to 37 at Shimia. Otherwise, the Alaska Peninsula, all in the lower to mid 40s. And for the lows tonight, again, single numbers, teens, about like what we've seen up there for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast. And uh, upper 20s to lower 30s for the North Central, or the North Northern Interior, south of the mountains there, with above freezing temperatures all the way to the southwest. Lows around 40 for Bristol Bay, 30s for the Aleutians, 30s to near 40, South Central Alaska, and uh, upper 30s to maybe lower 40s for the Panhandle. And for the highs tomorrow, again, the interior here looking really good, uh, both tomorrow and Monday. In fact, Monday might even be a little warmer uh, than what you'll see tomorrow, but definitely into the 60s up there through a good swath of the uh, northern Cuscombe Valley, eastward over to uh, Eagle, or you're forecasting a high of 66. And the southeast coast, 50s. North Gulf Coast, 50s. South Central Alaska, 50s also, but pushing towards 60 for the Susitna Valley and Copper River Basin. And flying weather tomorrow morning, IFR with that uh, front moisture coming northward. Kenai Peninsula, Southern Cook Inlet, southward across Kodiak, expanding eastward across the Gulf of Alaska. And we'll see for tomorrow afternoon, that uh, band shifts up to the north. We've got marginal VFR covering all the southeast coast, the lower stuff up here to the north. And uh, also lower conditions on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range. Northerly flow bringing IFR down to the Bering Sea side of the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula, back across the Pribilofs. And IFR pretty likely tomorrow afternoon for much of the north slope and Arctic coast. Anatovic though, VFR, same forecast for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill becoming marginal VFR, lowest conditions on the eastern entrance of both passes. Same pattern for rainy, but it'll be a little slower becoming marginal and probably staying VFR in all three passes to the west. And for windy VFR, Isabel, same forecast. And for Mentasta, looking VFR. And for Tanita, also VFR. Portage, looking marginal. Chilkoot and White, uh, starting out VFR, but uh, that should edge into mar IFR conditions tomorrow afternoon. And for the freezing levels, uh, again, the front southerly flow here coming north. So we've got 2,000 feet up toward the Southern Brooks Range there. A little cooler back along the North Gulf Coast, around 4, or a little warmer, 4,000 feet here. And for icing, we've got uh, a batch of rime icing will be heading in toward the southeast coast tonight and then overtaking the whole area by tomorrow morning through the day, extending back to the west, breaking up somewhat here across uh, south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, and then icing of a mixed variety here out over the southeast Bering Sea, as well as Bristol Bay, on down to the eastern Aleutians. For the uh, winds aloft, uh, upper level low tracking eastward here again, that keeping the main Pacific jet down to the south, but ridging behind it, bringing it up to the north. And that's the next system that'll be bringing the gales force winds into the western Aleutians Monday afternoon. Uh, still some ridging here over the interior, resulting in nice conditions. Very weak flow, nothing too significant here out of the northwest from the eastern Arctic coast on into the Yukon. 9,000 foot wind flow chart shaping up like this for tomorrow. It looks like the uh, strongest winds again out here over the Bering Sea or the Bering Strait southward, 25 increasing to 35 to 40 knots there 
uh, east, uh, central Aleutians, again, edging in toward Nikolsky, and then lighter conditions back around from the southeast, 20 to 25 here, uh, Kodiak Island into the interior, and then easterlies 25 to 30 knots, or 25 knots, Prince William Sound increased to 35 knots, and then as high as 45 knots down across the panhandle. Same pattern at 3,000 feet, 35 to 40 knot winds here, a narrow band there ahead of the front, right along the southeast coast into the northern gulf there, and uh, much lighter over the interior. Southeast though, all the way up, and then northerlies here 20 to 30, pick up to maybe 35 knots or so, from Nikolsky over to about ADAC. And turbulence wise, light to isolated moderate chop here in that uh, head of the front all along the southeast coast back into Prince William Sound. And then with those northerlies up here, Chuck CC all the way down to about St. Matthew Island. And again from uh, Falls Pass here westward to ADAC. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Another area where the Federal Aviation Administration is using technology in advancing aviation safety is in the use of remote weather cameras as a tool to aid pilots in making safe flight decisions. Hello, I'm Sheila Balistrieri. So in 99, we really started what we currently call the Alaska Weather Camera Program. We say Alaska because it's the only place in the FAA that uh, has this. Um, one, it's available through the internet so that the pilots, their family, their friends, they can all take a look at what the weather's like before you go there. In addition, we have all of that available within all of our flight service stations so that each flight service station technician can call up and look at weather real time. And with that, provide a better briefing, whether it's pre-flight or in-flight, to the pilots. Um, by far the most popular thing we've ever done. The weather camera system uh, has been a good one. I'm sure you can tell from the, uh, if you had access to the number of hits that they get that, uh, on each site, that uh, they're well used and uh, they save a lot of gasoline, they save a lot of uh, time for passengers out turning around in weather and coming back when a, when a pilot can just look at the camera and make a decision based on that rather than going out and actually looking at the weather. So when we, uh, um, look at the cameras, and if it's if it's a definite no-go situation, then we're not able. You know, we don't send an airplane out to take a look at it, and then have to just spend the gas and the time and energy to go out take a look at it and just turn around and come back. By placing weather cameras throughout the state, we've certainly come a long way. Today, we have 55 cameras throughout the state, an investment of $7 million. 12 new sites are scheduled to be up and running by this October. This concept, I think, is stunning in its simplicity. The pilot goes online and can view two images for each location. The first shows what the site would look like in a perfectly clear day situation. The second shows current weather conditions. Pilots can now learn what the visibility is in the mountain pass they face and whether they want to fly through it before they take off. In many instances, they may decide not to fly, to hold on that flight for a while, depending upon what they see. And that's long before they set foot in the aircraft. Alaska is a huge state, and the area covered so far by weather camps is comparatively small. In order for the project to be completed, 165 already identified sites need to be added. In what may be considered counterintuitive, many of these weather cameras are not placed at airports, but are positioned in or near mountain passes and other geographical areas, which are often used by pilots as navigational aids. Others are located at rural airports, where there are no weather observers or co-located with automated weather systems. 
pilots report that the value in these weather cameras is the real-time information they receive about destination and route conditions. Flight service specialists also have access to the weather camera images and routinely brief pilots with the most up-to-date information before takeoff and during their flight. We use the weather cams in, in two basic ways uh, here at the, the flight service station. For self-briefing, uh, to get ready to be able to brief the pilots, uh, to uh, look at the weather cam where, uh, where we have an airport with a weather report, we can compare what we see on the screen with what the weather report says. Where we do not have weather reports available, then we can look at the, at the camera and again get a, get a picture of, of what the weather is like at those locations. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is pull up the weather cameras at all the destinations in the southeast and, and check that against the, uh, the actual uh, reports at that, at that station and it gives you a lot better uh, picture of what the weather is doing uh, than what we used to enjoy with just, uh, with just the uh, observation. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all the pilots are doing the same thing. I know all of our pilots do. Uh, a well-placed camera looking in three different directions, there's nothing like that. Be able to see in real time what your weather actually looks like before you take off. Cost benefit is uh, quite a bit uh, as far as saving us money. Uh, we don't launch a flight when we know that the weather is good bad. When we can see it on the cameras that the weather is bad at our destination. When the weather cam system was first proposed, there were some people who doubted its uh, utility. And uh, uh, as they've come online, we've, uh, we've seen how the pilots really like to be able to see those pictures. They value it. And uh, as they become available to us as briefers, uh, we value it too. I do thank you also for, for the cameras. I personally have used the cameras. With, I think that probably the one that's most used is the one over going through the pass into Lake Clark. Uh, and. Uh, from time to time I get calls that it may not be functioning properly, which uh, I'm pleased to say that Mr. Poe responds to very quickly. During a recent independent study of Alaska pilots who have used the system, 68% reported making decisions to cancel or delay flights based on weather camera information. Pilots also reported that these decisions help them avoid additional fuel costs from flights that must be diverted or repeated due to bad weather. Now these safety and economic advantages generated more than 2.3 million hits this past year on the FAA's Alaska Weather Cam website. Gales along and off the coast here from the southeast. Um, minimum gales, or as in the case of the south coast, small craft advisories with seas 12 to 13 feet. Winds coming up uh, pretty brisk tomorrow afternoon there for Clarence Strait uh, at 30 knots and southeast 20 for the inside waters all the way up to northern Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay. For Monday, south winds 20 northern Lynn Canal, otherwise much lighter here, or especially for Clarence Strait, 15 knots. Much lighter winds along the coast now, south to maybe southwest, coming down to 20 knots. Seas 10 to 11 feet. And then for uh, Prince William Sound tomorrow, east winds 30 knots, 7 foot seas, northeast 30, northern Cook Inlet, and then 45 knot winds out of the northeast, southeast of the Forelands. Storms through tomorrow for the Barren Islands, and maybe storms lingering into the early morning here for the, or for the Barren Islands. Kamishak Bay storms through the day. And then south winds 25 there on the east side of Kodiak Island, 30 to 35 knot winds, strongest west on the western North Gulf Coast. Uh, Cook Inlet on Monday, really much lighter winds now down back down to 10 knots, 15 knots, uh, Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, northeast 15 to 20 there, Kodiak Island. Light winds now back along the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound. Bristol Bay, small craft advisories, winds out of the east to 25. Those south winds at 25 here, Sitka Nactus Castle Cape, 15 to 20 knot winds from varying directions for the Alaska Peninsula. And then those will become north, but uh, light, 15 knots there for the peninsula, Bristol Bay down to 15 out of the northeast. Same thing from Sitka Nactus Castle Cape. And for the eastern Aleutians, northwesterlies, uh, 30 knots, pretty common there, probably be some gale force gusts there through the passes. And then gales uh, minimum for the central Aleutians, falling back to small craft advisories, turning south here on the other side of that ridge for the western Aleutians. Those continue to increase to 35 knots on Monday, and uh, otherwise small craft advisory winds now uh, from the west becoming north to northwest across the Fox Islands. 
and the southwest coast. Uh, we've got for tomorrow uh, northerly winds here from St. Lawrence Island southward to Nunavak Island and then northeast uh, coming out of Cuscoan Bay. We're only at about 20 knots. Northwest 30 for the Perbloffs. Northerly is 25 to 30 for the Northern Bering Sea. And then for Monday, uh, 25 knotters there for St. Lawrence Island. Winds falling back on down to the south here, 15, or 20 knots becoming northeast 15. South of Nunavak Island, northerly is about 20 for the Perbloffs, a little more northeast there for St. Matthew Island. And uh, for the uh, forecast for tomorrow, that's where that chart went. So let's go to Monday for the Arctic coast. And not a lot of change here from Monday or Sunday to Monday. Basically, easterly is 10 to 15 on the central and east coast and mostly north or north northeast here for the west side, all in that 15 knot range and about 20 knots worth here from uh, Wales on up to uh, Cape Thompson. Now for tonight's weather again, looks uh, mostly cloudy or variably cloudy, maybe a few flurries, no change up here occurring uh, north of the Brooks Range, really no change occurring south of the Brooks Range either, just this uh, strong frontal boundary and the storm force winds coming up into the Barrens, Kachemak Bay, big wind increase for Cook Inlet later tonight, rain spreading northward slowly and extending back to the southwest, northerly winds continue tonight, tomorrow, shifting eastward here. The front weakening as it comes north, but the uh, storm warning is holding for Kachemak Bay through tomorrow. Uh, again, the gales along the southeast coast rain across the entire area there. A lot of sunshine in the interior with nice temperatures into the mid 60s. No change on the uh, Arctic coast and this uh, field of northerlies pretty much dies out for Monday with uh, Thermal low, warm temperatures, mostly sunny conditions over the interior, and then surges of moisture, rolling bands of showers up into the southeast coast, otherwise pretty dry everywhere else. Next front bringing gales and rain into the far western Aleutians. Have a great evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.